My name is Jim Fowler. I work for Crowley Fuels in Alaska. And today I'd like to talk to you about home heating tanks. When you install a tank, it's always good before you do anything to talk to either the fire marshal or the home building inspector in your location and find out what the codes are. Do you have setbacks? Do you have a size restriction on your tank? Um, how far from windows or doors do the tank have to be? These are all things that you need to know prior to starting an installation so you don't have to reinstall the tank or downsize or you know, make changes that you really can't afford to do. When you install a tank, you either want it on the gable side of the house or you want it at least 18 inches from the drip line off the eave. And the reason why is you do not want ice and snow to come down onto the tank and cause damage. If your eave or overhang is long enough to completely cover the tank, it's fine to put the tank underneath that eave. You need to put the tank on a pad. The cement platform is larger than the outside diameter of the tank. In this case, it's the same size as the outside diameter of the platform. The pad is also three inches thick, which it needs to be. That's the minimum thickness for a pad for a home heating tank. Once it's on a pad, then you have to secure it. Um, we use a pressure treated wood foundation because this tank needed to be elevated. If the tank sits on the ground, then these legs have to be no longer than 12 inches and provide at least six inches of clearance between the bottom surface and the bottom of the tank. That's your rule of thumb, six inch clearance underneath the tank, no more than 12 inches in length. The feet should be steel and they should be threaded into a flange and the flange then should be lagged into um, uh, wood preferably um, or onto a cement pad. The other thing that your tank needs, needs what you call a shut off or ball valve. So you can shut off the fuel exiting your tank for maintenance of your filter, you have the ability to turn off the, the fuel flow here, here at the source. Filtration, you need good filtration on this. You need a water block filter set in a good filter housing. Uh, what that filter does, it allows uh, any water that accumulates in the tank. This medium will swell and plug the fuel flow and prevent fuel from going through the line into your home and, uh, and cause it damage or harm. You're gonna have a fill access. There's a locking cap on the top. That is where the fuel enters the tank. And then you need to have a vent. And the vent allows the tank to breathe. One of the things you'll notice the homeowner has done is provided a ladder for access for the driver to be able to safely get up and fill the tank. You need to make sure the ladder's secure. You wanna do something like this homeowner's done with a bungee cord that's lagged into that and that ladder cannot fall, it can't fall and cause damage, it can't uh, blow into your backyard and embarrass you, it's, uh, it's there and, uh, and that's a good place for it to be. For more tips and information on home heating tanks, go online to our website or you can call one of our locations and talk to a customer service representative we're happy to help.